Normally, this is where I go into a segment I call Another News, where I talk about news outside of the world of DC. Now, I wanted to do something a little special because it's my channel and I am a fan of this genre. Mm. We are a couple days away from February, and February is Black History Month. What we're going to do here is share some of our favorite selections. Mm. And I am also, I'm not sure if you've done this, I'm going to also tell you what streaming service you can find these movies on because I did some research. It's okay. I'm here. (laughs) Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. I appreciate the conversation. Let's get into this. Keith. Yes. Go ahead and start off with a movie that you would recommend. I would highly, highly recommend and We were just kind of talking about it off air before we started, but the hurricane. Now, big chunk of mine are, I think, uh, mm-hmm. I got a lot of Denzel Washington-led uh, projects, <laughs> <laughs> but because uh, he's my guy. Love him. But yeah, he, Denzel Washington came out in 99. Uh, big year, if you remember what the well, <laughs> If you were one of those people that's old like me and you, you remember 1999, it's a big year for movies at the time. And this was a big one. This was one uh, where he plays boxer uh, based on true story. Hurricane Ruben, Carter, yep. Ruben Hurricane Carter, that's right. Yep. Who was uh, wrongfully in prison for triple murder Yep. Uh, back in 60, 64? I think 60, in the 60s, I should probably have that 60s yeah yeah um anyway but yeah and uh spent uh many 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 years in prison it took uh, a group of young kids one kid in particular who uh uh I looked up to him and uh I idolized him yeah fascinated with the story and was really just looking into it and realized there was some a lot of a lot of problems with his trial and with the case and uh you know, got a group of law students, convinced a group of law students to look into it, and uh, it, it led to his uh, led to his release. And uh, it's an awesome performance. This is one where Denzel Washington absolutely, outside of he should have won for Malcolm X, absolutely should have won for this. He and lost he out to Kevin Spacey Kevin for Spacey, American Beauty. American Beauty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is, I love American Beauty. Love Sam Mendes. It's a good movie. Denzel should have won this. Should have won this one, in my opinion. Uh, the Oscar. Talk about the Oscar. He was nominated for best best actor, and uh, yeah, it's one of those ones where when he won for Training Day, we look back and go, "All right, cool." But he hit the two. It's the two like it's like Leo DiCaprio when he won for The Revenant. Absolutely, absolutely. We're, and his hurricane was The Wolf of Wall Street. That, it, sure, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. <clears throat> but uh, regardless, movies very very good. Um, Leif Schreiner's in it. Uh, there's a few other, I'm trying to think. Uh, a bunch of other notable. Uh, I think look, Dan, Hedaya, Dan Hedaya is in it. I think is in Usual Suspects. Or, no, he plays the dad in Clueless. Uh, he's in it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you got a couple of names in here. Uh, John Hanna from the Mummy movies. Uh, yes, he, he is in it. That's he right. played Jonathan, uh, yeah. her brother. That's uh, right. Clint, Clancy Brown played the uh, guard. Yes. The, uh, prison guard. He's always a prison guard. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> the Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> yeah. But I, I completely agree with you, man. This is one of those movies. And regardless of how you feel, maybe they dramatize like, some of the story, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they do that with all these movies. Um, yeah. It's the performance. Yes. You know, there's, there's a scene where he's sitting down in the prison cell and he's talking to himself Mm -hmm. and we all kind of do this you know um whether we want to admit it or not he's he's reasoning with himself he's like you know trying to stay sane because you know he there's a chance he could get out but he's wrongfully convicted his uh he's putting so much pressure on himself because he's a promise promised uh promising prize fighter yeah um so yeah you absolutely uh Got a great recommendation here with the first one, The Hurricane, mm-hmm. starring Denzel Washington, Absolutely. which you can find on Hulu as well as HBO Max. Is that correct? Yes, uh, that's where I caught it. It's, uh, yeah, HBO Max. So it's on Hulu too as well. That's cool. Okay. Yep. 
That's awesome. There you go. More options. Okay. In case you don't have one or the other, chances are if you have Disney Plus, you got Hulu. So, right. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do one of my movies. We'll go back and forth. And I kind of wanted to go with more recent ones Mm -hmm. um, and ones that are a little bit more, I guess you could say, serious, um, inspired by true events, based on true events, whatnot. And there was one that I absolutely had to include. Um, it's a movie that I did revisit last night. Hidden Figures. Absolutely. This movie, I remember, I believe we saw it in theaters. Did we not? We did. It's the first movie uh, we saw together. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, it. and boy, was it a, a, gr- a great one that still yeah. absolutely hits you today. Taraji P. Henson in the oh. center right there as Katherine Johnson. Yeah. Octavia Spencer to the right as Dorothy Vaughn and Janelle Monet in her film acting debut as Mary Jackson. These three women so so responsible like so much responsibility for some of NASA's uh, early accomplishments as far as space flight goes. And I absolutely love this movie. These three actresses right here great chemistry together they bring it when the drama calls for it yeah such an important story they handle the material very well um and i I just love how the movie focuses on them during that time in nasa and what they had to overcome just to get you know fair work you know they weren't being paid more than other people obviously you know during that time and the hurdles that they had to overcome i just thought the movie did a great job telling that story such an important story such a heartfelt story at times a feel-good story um but yeah absolutely recommend this what do you what are your thoughts on it keith 100 percent uh completely agree i felt bad because you know a lot of this stuff took place uh near my hometown in Virginia mm. and I didn't didn't learn about any of this uh, Catherine Catherine Johnson uh, Catherine Johnson right yeah okay yeah was from uh, I think she lived in Norfolk Virginia you know I grew up in Virginia Beach so um, right there uh, yeah I didn't know any of this I used to go to the NASA <laughs> uh, uh, Air and Space Center up in uh, Langley all the time uh, when I was a kid so but it's really great, great story, you know. Also, just great. Uh, I, was, I was appreciative of it because, you know, obviously we saw the struggle, but also just we saw their contribution. Yes. How how, instru- how instrumental they were in in the space program in those in those days, in the early days, and uh, especially Catherine Johnson, who was, I mean, was a big big part of that in those early days. Uh, we you know stories we did, like I said just alluded to we don't we don't get to hear that too often so mm-hmm. and uh performances like you said taraji was out oh, she's great and everything but she was out, just stand out in this movie man she was there was there was one scene where she had she just had enough and she goes off on kevin costner who plays yeah. uh one of the nasa directors mm-hmm. my goodness yes. i mean if if there was ever a campaign to do um, her for best lead actress, it's that scene. Yes. And she absolutely delivers, you know, so wow. intense. Was it the bathroom one where she, because she had to go to a completely different building, the bathroom? Yeah. And and he's like, where are where you? Where have you been? Yeah. Where have you been? What are you yeah. doing? This and that. Completely unaware yeah. of, you know, the environment, you right. know, that these ladies have to work through you know and it's a great cast um outside of these three you got glenn powell as Mm -hmm. astronaut john glenn gavin costner kirsten dunst and then from the big bang theory um jim uh jim parsons jim Jim parsons yeah 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 great great cast even greater story i could not recommend this enough marshall ali marshall Marshall ali yeah Yes, absolutely. Brief, the brief, uh, brief role in here, yeah. Man, I, I, I look up to him and Idris Elba as far as like 
trying mm. to be a smooth man, you know, right. smooth with the ladies. <laughs> I can never get that way, but <laughs> hell, man, like if there was ever figures to look up to, absolutely, make them the next James Bond, please. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, Hidden Figures on Disney Plus. Check it out. Yeah, absolutely recommend it. Keith, what is your next pick? Good call. Good call. All right, next one is another bio. Well, yeah, yeah biopic. Uh, <clears throat> it is uh, another Denzel Washington led uh, movie. This is directorial debut. Yes. It was Antoine Fisher, 2003, I think. Right in that time. Something like that. 2003, yeah. 2004, something like that. Uh, yeah, his directorial debut stars Derek Luke in his film debut. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, of course, you got Denzel. You got uh, Joy Bryant, I think, uh, in a small role in that film film as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, story just this. Viola man. Davis, too. Viola Davis, yes. Very, very, very brief uh, role in the end of this film. Yep. Uh, which, in rewatching it, I completely went, oh my God, Viola Davis. I didn't. That's a tough scene to get through there. But uh, yes. yeah, man. And it's just about this young man. Uh, it's based on a book by the real Antoine Fisher. Who uh, was just a young man, and just his, his journey through his growth, uh, his struggle dealing with uh, his past, being an orphan kid, trying to figure out where he came from, um, and you know he joins the navy, and uh, his struggles and uh, his struggles there, trying to come up, uh, just his growth as a, as a man, as a person, and uh, him trying to trying to he tends to watch and plays his uh, his uh, his therapist, I guess, uh, also as a psychologist, able, yeah, therapist. psychologist, yeah. And uh, you know, just convinces him to, in telling his story, convinces him to go back and you know figure out where he came from. And he's a young man that was uh, in and out of uh, in and out of foster homes and grew up in one particular, particularly abusive, uh, physical and uh, verbally and mostly abusive foster home. And uh, yeah, it's just it's a simple story, just in terms of simple in terms of the premise, but there's a lot going, a lot goes into it, and. Uh, uh, powerful, powerful movie. Like I said, there's a, lot, a few scenes in here that are pretty tough to to get through. Uh, yeah, uh, I agree with you. It's um, for for his film debut, Derek Fisher. I'm sorry, uh, Derek Luke. Excuse me, is a uh, very great, very great. Hey, there are times I wanted to say Derek Fisher too. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I can't, man. See, <laughs> so that was your basketball fan, you know? Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I completely agree with you, man. This is actually a pretty pretty heartbreaking movie. Yeah. You know, because you know whether whether you want we want to admit it or not, there are a lot of these types of uh, you know situations happening in the real world. You yeah, know, so. like um, I can speak from my own experience. You know, I I relate to some of this uh, stuff in the movie. That's why it hits mm -hmm. stuff close to me. But man, let me tell you, Denzel in his directorial debut yeah. is a fantastic job especially working with a young actor like um mm -hmm. derek luke luke, <laughs> luke? Yeah. okay i want to make sure i get that right yeah it's a uh, it, it's it can be a tough movie to watch at times but it's so powerful i love the messages in there i love the themes in there you know about family and you know you, discovering you know where you're from and stuff like that the ending I will say, well, let's not spoil it. Let's not, yeah. let's not spoil it for in case anybody, you know, hasn't seen it. But go on, sir. I think it's it's heartbreaking, but you know, well, in not spoiling the ending, but I think it's hopeful though. Yes, definitely hopeful. Yeah. And so you can kind of see, you can see it. It's just one of those things where you know what you've seen. Okay, it's been bad, but it can get better if you wanted to. Um, and uh, yeah, sometimes and it's just some great lessons, that, you know, that the character learns, and certainly, like you said, carry over into real life. And just about, you know, embracing it's okay. Terrible stuff happens to all of us. You know, it's okay. It's okay to be upset by it, but don't hold on to it. And you know, just about looking forward, looking ahead. I agree. Yeah, and I guess heartbreaking isn't. It wasn't the best way to, to describe this movie. I meant more like there are heartbreaking moments. And I agree. No, I think you're right. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of moments that that, that really hit you. Yeah. You know, if if you have a heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, 
Dan, that was a great choice, man. And I've actually watched that movie several times hmm. on DVD. Um, one thing I should point out about myself, I grew up with one TV in the house. So I grew up watching a lot of these kind of movies, which is why I wanted to have this conversation because there are so many great movies with, um, you know, um, African-American actors, actresses, filmmakers, such powerful stories. And, nice. you know, it's just uh, something that I, I wanted to do personally. So um, Absolutely. thank you for having this conversation with me. Of course, and, man. You know, being cool with me having this. So let me go ahead with another movie of mine. And um, this one this one's fairly recent it's inspired by true events it's not so much serious but my goodness this is gold comedy gold dolomite is my name and fucking up motherfuckers is my game (laughs) eddie murphy is back as dolomite this movie is so damn good Look at the recognizable faces in there. You got Mike Epps. You got is is that Key or Peel? Key. Michael Key, Key Keegan. Key. Michael yeah. Key, I think. Yeah. Michael Key. Not pictured. Wesley Snipes. Yes. <laughs> yes. He's so good. And the story is about Rudy Ray Moore. Yeah. Developing an outrageous character named Dolomite becomes an underground sensation and star of a kung fu anti-establishment film and that could make a, or break more and obviously if you know the story it makes him yeah. it makes him you know it's such a fun movie such a fun fun performance um eddie murphy if you have followed his career you know he can bring it as a dramatic actor when he needs to and boy, does he bring it in this movie. That being said, I said this movie is comedy gold. It really is. Yeah. The stand-up scenes where Eddie Murphy is on stage yelling, cursing, telling jokes, rhyming. Gold. Mm-hmm. Gold. Vintage Eddie Murphy. The Eddie Murphy that we've been missing. The Eddie Murphy that we've been wanting to see. So great. Yeah. Keith. Your thoughts on Dolomite is my name. Uh, you couldn't be more right. I wish I had thought of this myself. I know uh, on our other channel, uh, we were talk- Apocalypse, we were talking about uh, our rankings for that year. I think I had this at number four of uh, 19 when it came out. Mm-hmm. And I mean, just he, he spot on Rudy Ray Moore and telling the story and just a guy who you said just he just wanted to entertain the world that was it like he just he he just felt like he had a story to tell and he had a just some funny silly ridiculous things to say and he just he just wanted to make people laugh Mm -hmm. genuinely and his performance like you said when he it's it's funny it it's dramatic but not in a serious way like he's just he's just determined you know and then he, I mean, he gets it done. He just, he gets it done. I love the way when making this ridiculous movie, <laughs> this Dolomite film, uh, <laughs> I think somebody, one of the guys on our channel compared it to, to uh, The Room, uh, that guy. What's the guy's name? Oh, uh, um, uh, Tommy, right Tommy Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau, yeah, right. Where, uh, and, I, and, I, and I was like, well, I, I, yes and no. But see, Tommy Wiseau really thought he was making a great movie. Right. <laughs> Whereas Dolomite knew, or Rudy Ray Moore knew this movie was ridiculous. And he was like, he, I remember the line in the movie of Dolomite, I think he's just like, that's why it's going to work. Like, it's ridiculous, of course. He's like, he knows. But, and it was a huge, huge hit, you know, mm-hmm. and he's, he's one of those guys, kind of, a lot of people look at him as the, kind of the godfather of rap, hip hop. Oh, Yeah. Like you said, like, him, like, him like rhyming, the, tell the those roots, rhymes. the roots yeah. of that, yeah, absolutely. And he would because he had music playing in the background of his stand up, and he's saying mm-hmm. all these crazy rhymes about how great he is, uh, as, as a human being <laughs> with women and all this other stuff. And you know, so yeah, it's great. I couldn't recommend this enough, man. It's, it's, 
I'm glad you, I'm glad you, I'm glad you made this call. That's great. And I got to give a shout out to the actress on the top left, yes. Devin Joy Randolph. So good, so damn good in this <laughs> movie. For yeah, sure. I could not recommend this movie enough, guys. If you're a fan of Eddie Murphy, this isn't Haunted Mansion. This isn't Meet Dave. <laughs> this isn't mine. Uh, Meet or Norbit, whatever the hell that movie was. <laughs> Norbit, yeah. <laughs> this is Eddie Murphy triumphant big comeback Legit. recommend it absolutely netflix 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 check and it out how much more excited does it get you for coming to america too uh i okay i've been holding off watching the trailer because i've been wanting to do a trailer reaction i might do one with you after this okay. podcast if you have time <laughs> okay because i've been wanting to watch that trailer <laughs> And I'm so excited for that movie. Yes. Yeah, we'll plug in. If you haven't seen Coming to America, please watch it. I don't Absolutely. know what service it is on, but man, you get some like Eddie Murphy back in the day. Great stuff. Keith, what is your next movie? So my next one, that my that's my number one comedy of all time, by the way. Nice. Uh, absolutely. Uh my next film though for this list. Is uh, another another bio. This is probably the first actual biopic, right? Um, and it was a 2004 film, uh, Ray, based on uh, a section of life of the great Ray Charles, rhythm and blues uh, artist, uh, and yeah, one of the great musicians of all time. Um, so many songs that there were songs in here, and I'm ashamed to say, I. Didn't realize, oh, that was Ray Charles. I didn't know that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, directed by Taylor Hackford. It was awesome. Jamie Foxx and one of the great, great performances of all time. He pretty much became Ray Charles in this movie. Yes. Uh, and of course, he won the Oscar for it for Best Actor. And, well deserved. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Kerry Washington, I think, may have been nominated as well, was also uh, played his wife in this film and was really stellar performance in this and uh yeah it covers i think only maybe about it's just i don't say short it's a kind of from his, his childhood to his rise it covers uh, his childhood um his his early struggles you know trying to and people just taking advantage of him like this yes. movie really really goes into like just how fucked up you yeah. know society can be especially towards like to a blind black man. <laughs> I mean, it's it's one thing to be a, a musician who doesn't know their way around the business and they get right. taken over. Being a blind man. Yeah. And, you know, that on top of it, it's just, I, I appreciated that so much about the movie, but please continue. Yeah, yeah definitely. 100%. And uh, touches on all that stuff. Ray Charles was alive for this. This was, this was well before he passed. Maybe about yes. a year or so before he passed. So um, he did have some input into it. Uh, but, uh yeah, man, you get uh, Regina King. Oh, oh, Regina King. Yes, also is man. She, Oof. Her excellent. Performance, uh, yeah, one of his mm -hmm. one of his uh, girlfriends, you know, uh, in this film, and she mm -hmm. was awesome in this movie. You get Terrence Howard, I think, is in here. Terrence Howard, yes, he is. Uh, you, here, our DC connection. You got Harry Lennox is in here. Harry well. Lennox, yes, he is. Yep, absolutely. Uh, plays like his manager or something or uh know. he plays Assistant. one of his managers later on yeah um, clifton powell is like kind of his manager right. Right. friend um okay. yeah if you don't know who clifton powell is in the movie next friday he played pinky right <laughs> he did didn't he that's right yeah I forgot about that yeah <laughs> uh but yeah i think uh yeah this movie you get into ray charles and i'm a big obviously like I said, there's so many songs you you might not have realized are Ray Charles that you'll get into uh, when you get into this movie. But it's a great performance, you know, um, and just covers, like I said, just one of those movies covers the life of one of our great, uh, great artists of all time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, a, it, it's like I said, it's an incredible performance by Jamie Foxx. Like you don't even really, it's not Jamie Foxx. Like you're not even looking at it like it's Jamie Foxx. Like it's. It's like it's Ray Charles on the screen, you know. And you know what? Some uh, on that note, some some of his uh, I can't remember who it was. It was a close relative. It might have been one of his uh, children, um, or uh, yeah, it, it might have been or it was some relative. They were on the set, 
And there was times when they forgot it was Jamie Foxx right. because that's how dedicated wow. he was yeah. to this role. They couldn't at times tell the difference. Right. And jeez, man, just, I mean, watching the movie you just, you, I mean, Remy Malik is great as mm-hmm. Freddie Mercury. Mm-hmm. Doesn't even stand, not even the same ballpark yeah. as Jamie Foxx as yeah. Ray Charles. Wow. Yeah. So incredible. And, you know, Jamie Foxx, he is a, he, he is a natural talent all around. Mm-hmm. He, can sing. he can act. He's, he's, he is, he is Will Smith. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> On that level, like this, what this did for his career, his acting career, shot him up. Absolutely. Shot him up all the way. I love this movie. I love that you picked it. It's a great, great choice. Definitely check it out. Ray, and I believe it's on Hulu. Oh, is it? Okay. Hulu. Yeah. By the way, Antoine Fisher, I forgot to mention, um, yes. it's available for free on YouTube. Really? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, YouTube. I watched it on, uh, uh, I don't know, some channel. I think it was uh, IFC. I think it's where I watched it. So mm-hmm. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. And yeah, again, Ray available on Hulu. Just okay. You need to be sold. Go watch Jamie Foxx's Oscar speech for when yes. Ray. Yeah, that'll get you right in. Absolutely. Great choice, Keith. I love it. My next movie is a movie that's fairly recent. Mm. A movie that has a lot of heart. Movie that's very important. And up until before I saw this movie. I did not know what a green book was. But my goodness, this movie is so good. Inspired by a true friendship. And they're referencing Viggo Morton's character. And I believe in the movie he plays an Italian kind of, you know, businessman, you know, like, you know, has a way with words, you know, can diffuse the situation. And that's mm-hmm. important if you're driving a character played by Mahershala Ali, who is a very good, very, very well-respected pianist um, in this movie. And what happens is um, Viggo Mortensen's character takes him. Oh, sorry. Dr. Don Shirley, I believe, is the mm-hmm. name of Mahershala Ali's character. And Viggo Mortensen drives him around in... I don't want to. How would you describe it? The the South during a time of, you know, racial uh, tensions. Well, honestly, uh, unsafe. <laughs> unsafe. Yeah. Not a good but, time to be black man traveling around mm-hmm. by yourself. So. But Dr. Don Shirley, played by the incredible Mahershala Ali, doesn't care. He wants to do it. He's so determined to do this, and yeah, like like the poster says. A story of friendship. The interactions between these two, a lot of it takes place in the car, and it is awesome. It is incredible. Viggo Mortensen, you know him from Lord of the Rings. I love him from G.I. Jane. Absolutely brings it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a movie with fun moments. Very, very important stuff. Very, uh, a, a little bit lightweight, disturbing stuff for sure. But man, these two right here are the heart of the movie for sure. And, you know, they find common ground, you know, they're not so, you know, different. They, um, just a couple of, you know, honest working, good guys. Keith, what are your thoughts on Green Book? I have not seen Green Book. I still haven't Ooh, seen it. It's book. okay. I haven't yeah. seen one of your recommendations too that we'll get to, <laughs> but you're yeah. missing out, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, well, I was aware of, uh, the, the green books or the green book if you want to call it that um, because uh i myself i've driven across the country uh coast to coast three times myself and i remember just when i was first doing it i remember just researching and i stumbled across that and went oh wow I, wow this is a thing that was a real thing and it was yeah absolutely... i didn't even talk about that yeah the, the green book i didn't yeah. know that okay if you don't um, keith go ahead explain it Okay. Well, yeah, it was just a thing that was absolutely necessary for one thing. But uh, 
yeah, just a it's just a listing of safe places to go if you're a black uh, traveler. Uh, mostly, mostly in the south, but it, it was expanded really for kind of the whole country. But it's some safe places to go for gas, or food, or for lodging, or for uh, automobile uh, uh, help. You know, pretty much anything like yeah, goods, convenience, any of that. Right, kind of stuff. right, yeah, yeah. Just a safe place to go if you're traveling alone or if family or whatever, um, where you won't uh, you won't have any troubles for people who don't want you around. You yeah, know? so. So, yeah, so definitely, yeah. So I knew that was a real thing. But yeah. No, yeah, I haven't seen this movie yet. His uh, second Oscar, Marshall Ali won. Yeah. Like, yeah he's yeah. that good in this movie. Um, one fun moment I just have to bring up. They're driving through Kentucky. They stop by a KFC, and <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. Oh, it was, I think that was a trailer, and he had never tried it before or something like that, or? Well, yeah, uh, Don Shirley, uh, played by Mahershala Ali, has <laughs> not tried chicken. <laughs> okay. Fried chicken, uh, yeah. at least from KFC. And it, like I said, the story of a true friendship. And yeah. just, you'll love this movie. You'll enjoy it. I'm so glad I watched it. It's on Hulu, Green Book. Check it out. Yes, Keith. What is your next pick, sir? All right. I got to watch that, man. I got to watch that movie. Uh, all right. Uh, where are we at here? Uh, okay. So last one is one of the greats uh, directed by uh, the late, great John Singleton. Who yes. Who unfortunately lost a couple of years ago. Uh, that is 1991's Boys in the Hood. Mm. And this movie is a classic. classic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, you got Ice Cube, you got uh, the great Cube Gooding Jr., you got Morris Chestnut. This movie, this movie launched so many careers. Um, John Singleton is his, his directorial debut, feature feature uh, debut. He was the youngest director to be nominated for a uh, Best Director Oscar at age 24, which is incredible. Um, and you know, it was the acting debut of Ice Cube. It was. Not the film debut of Cuba Gooding Jr., but it was his—I think his first major role. Uh, obviously, Lawrence Fishburne, who you know had some bit parts here and there, but this is one of his first big starring roles. Morris Chestnut as well. Angela, Angela Bassett, Bassett playing, yeah, Angela Bassett. Neil Long, Bassett, Regina yeah. King. Wow, yeah, that's right. Yep, Regina King, uh, Tyra Farrell, who is great as well as so many people. MC8 is in, uh, not MC8. Uh, is MC8 in this movie? I think he is. I don't remember. Anyway, so no I told you that there was one movie on your list that I have not seen, and yes. regretfully, it's this movie. But hey, that's why we're doing this right now, okay? Absolutely. We're making recommendations for movies that you haven't seen for Black History Month yeah. that are particularly important, and Boys in the Hood is one of those movies. Please, Absolutely. Continue, Keith. Absolutely. Yeah, you might you might be seeing it soon. Let's put it that way. Um, uh but yeah, man, this it's just, this movie is just a the story, just it's right there in the title, um, and it's just about the kind of the day to day sort of day to day life of this young man, who his parents are divorced. Uh, that plays like Cuban Jr. and uh, his mother is a successful kind of successful. Uh, I can't remember what her occupation is, but you know he goes to live with his father, who lives in South Central Los Angeles. And just it's about his life growing up there, you know, and what that what that is like uh, living in that area. And it's you know, a lot of it is just real, some real insights as we've never really got this before in Hollywood, right? And so we hadn't had this look at day to day life in the hood in LA presented right. to us, presented in this way. And you know, there's people that have hopes and dreams that are sometimes, often, unfortunately, often dashed, and. Sometimes there's there's friendships and there's relationships and you know there's family stuff and you know uh, sometimes it's unfortunately often especially at that time does end in tragedy um, and it's just about trying to overcome all that you know and it's a great coming of age film and like I said lost so many careers and I mean this movie is a classic you know. There was a movie a couple years ago starring Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart called Get Hard. 
And mm. that damn movie spoiled this movie for me. Did they, it really? They, they talked about – have you seen a movie? No. They talked about um, Kevin Hart. Um, Kevin Hart was trying to explain to Will Ferrell – where he came from and what he had to go through. Yeah. And I don't remember quite a lot of it, but I bet you when I watch this movie, I'm going to be like, I knew that was coming because fucking sure. Kevin Hart oh, no. spoiled it because he lied to Will Ferrell to try and act gangster oh, cool. And uh, it's, it's actually a really, really funny bit. But yeah, man, look, I, I am a fan of director John Singleton. Rest in mm-hmm. peace. Yeah. Um, he was almost going to do a Tupac biopic that would have yes. done that movie, uh, that that you know figure, that iconic figure in our world, justice more than what Benny Boone did for All Eyes on Me. And I was looking at John Singleton's filmography, uh, who again is the director, oh, who's a, who is the director of uh, Boys in the Hood, yeah. and it's pretty impressive. Yeah, poetic justice. I love that movie. Yeah. Um, Four Brothers. Too Fast, Too Furious. Right, Four Brothers. Okay. Yeah. Rose, Rosewood. Rosewood. Wow. That's a good movie. Yeah. I saw that movie as a kid. Again, <laughs> grew up with one TV in the house. Okay. Yeah. Disturbing. Disturbing movie. Yeah. But yeah, prolific director. Mm-hmm. Such a big loss in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, but yeah, great recommendation with The Boys in the Hood. It is currently on Prime Video, Vudu, and Google Play. It is. Okay. It does cost to rent about two dollars, two to three dollars. But Keith is recommending it. Great I look for it, classic. It does cost to oh. rent about two dollars to three dollars. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I said Google and right. <laughs> my Nest went off yeah i appreciate it always listening always listening don't make me go tony stark on you okay (laughs) jarvis yeah (laughs) anyways man um well uh i have two but i'll just quickly mention them um first one one night in miami yes amazon original movie inspired by true events these popular important figures um back in the day malcolm x muhammad ali jim brown sam cook mm. all meet on one night and discuss their their importance towards the civil the civil rights movement and their responsibilities incredible acting especially the guy who plays malcolm x mm. so good all of them muhammad ali that guy is great Okay, there's some boxing sequences in there. Have you seen it? No, I still haven't watched this yet. Watch it. It's so good. Yes. A lot of dialogue. There is a lot of dialogue in this movie, okay? Mm. All right. But it's so important. Regina King does a great job in her directorial debut. Yes. These guys bring it. I highly recommend it. One Night in Miami. And then there's this movie that I watched that I probably won't watch a second time. Detroit. Yeah, I haven't seen this either. Catherine Bigelow, director right. of Hurt Locker, want first female to win a uh, Academy Award for directing the story of the 1967 Detroit riots, riots yeah. and the incident that happened at the Augers Motel. Mm. John Boyega from the Star Wars movies, great, great dramatic performance. Will Poulter, the son from We Are the Millers, okay, really, really brings it difficult role playing a racist cop and sure. he oh my god terrifying <clears throat> terrifying anthony mackie you know he brings it he worked with uh, Catherine Bigler, biglow the director in, on uh, the hurt locker yeah yeah this movie is so uncomfortable but mm-hmm. so important so important it right. really does not hold back on the injustices that i've read about i'm not saying i'm from that time but from what i've read about of that time yes detroit mm. i recommend it only if you're into serious drama uncomfortable yeah. like important controversial subjects detroit available 
on I believe it's Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. Hulu. Hulu. Oh, is it? Hulu. 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 Really? Okay. Yes. Available on Hulu and Hulu. Um, One Night in Miami. Excuse me. Available on Prime mm -hmm. Video. Keith? Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having this conversation. And, um, yeah, letting me talk with you about you know, important and very high quality black movies that everyone can enjoy. Mostly everyone can enjoy. Um, these movies, highly recommend. You got the uh, streaming services that they're on. Check them out, please. And yes. uh, leave us your thoughts on the movies that you've seen already, movies that you haven't seen, which ones that you're interested in. And uh, yeah, that was just about do it for the Fandom United podcast.